All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Seattle Seahawks. This offseason is going to be very interesting for them. They have the fifth pick in the draft, the 20th pick in the draft. They have over $20 million in cap space to spend. They have just a really young, interesting team that did a great job. Their rookies did a great job last season. Their talent in general went above and beyond. This team was not projected to have nine wins and make the playoffs and actually have the lead over San Francisco, who was one of the best teams, arguably the best team heading into the playoffs. I mean, nine and eight, wild card game, divisional rival on the road, you're winning at halftime. That is awesome. At the end of the day, the defense had major flaws, right? It just wasn't a great defense. Now, there's a lot of things to be excited about. There's a lot of promising players like Tariq Woolen. But for the most part, I think they're going to spend a hefty amount of draft capital and money on re-signing the guys they want to re-sign, specifically on the defensive side, and drafting the defensive guys that they have their eye on. Having the fifth pick is... A great problem to have, or ha I should say, having the fifth pick with a quarterback heavy draft and a quarterback under contract who is you know, basically in his prime right here, comeback player of the year, Geno Smith, signed a three-year, $75 million base salary, could get up to 105 with different incentives. The Seahawks set both sides up beautifully it was a master class contract basically like this all right we're gonna pay you a reasonable amount for your first year if you go above and beyond like you did last year you're gonna get paid like you're one of the best quarterbacks a top five quarterback in the nfl right if you don't they technically could let him loose and it wouldn't be that much of a negative it wouldn't be that much of a downside as far as logistically goes for seattle the fifth pick is interesting because we mentioned their defense, which was just ranked 25th in the league. Rush defense was not good at all. They were the third worst rush defensive team in the league. Passing D a little bit better, but the defensive line needs a ton of work or just a complete overhaul. We'll see what happens. Shelby Harris got dropped or released, I should say, earlier today. That saves about $8.9 million against the cap. But before we go into any this video any further if you guys enjoy it hit that like button hit that sub button i post daily nfl content i post a lot of seahawks videos i love you guys so much you guys are extremely supportive fan base to this channel i'm curious to hear what you want the seahawks to do down below the big question mark heading into the offseason when the season ended was what's going to happen at qb well, Geno Smith had a phenomenal season. All right, comeback player of the year. They don't just hand those out. He had a completion percentage of 70%. He threw 30 touchdowns. He had just 11 interceptions, threw for 4,300 yards, which is over 250 yards per game. Like I said, the defense just kind of let him down. It was mainly the defensive line, which is why that fifth pick is so interesting because is Geno Smith your quarterback for the long future? No, he is not. Could he be the perfect mentor for a young quarterback to take at five? Very much so. In fact, I've even seen some mock drafts where they have the Seahawks trading up to like pick number three with Arizona and taking an Anthony Richardson or taking a Will Levis. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I don't think that's their best route. I would be pretty surprised because here's the way it's going down right now in the NFL draft. You have Caroline who's taking a QB. You have Houston who's taking a QB. Arizona doesn't need a QB, so Indianapolis might trade up to three or what have you. Basically, three of the top four picks, regardless, the way it stands right now, are taking quarterbacks. They're going to take CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, and then either Anthony Richardson or Will Levis. So what does that mean for Seattle? Well, it sets them up to have a day one great starter in this league. Because you're either going to get Will Anderson, who is in a lot of these drafts. He's the edge guy from Alabama. Great talent, star talent. You could get Tyree Wilson. Also have seen him go to Seattle at number five in a bunch of mock drafts. And Jalen Carter. You know, I think Jalen Carter is the clear choice if he were to fall to five. I think he's the best talent in this draft. And so regardless, no matter how you put it, 
you're getting if you're drafting defense with pick number five, you're getting Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, or Tyree Wilson. That's unbelievable. And then if we go down to pick number 20, that's where things get a little bit interesting because once again, Seattle could make a lot of moves here in the draft and get capable star level starters in the first round here. So, you know, maybe Nolan Smith drops down to 20. Whatever the case is, it brings up another hypothetical. Now, quarterback won't be into play at pick number 20. If they're going to get a quarterback, I think that would happen later on in the draft because it's a it's not as bad of a deep-ish quarterback draft as some people make it out to be. I'm looking at guys like Jackson Smith and Jigba. You know, why not? The thing is, I don't think he's going to be available at 20. But And also, you know, wide receiver isn't a huge glaring need for him. Obviously, you got DK, you got Lockett, you got Marquise Goodwin. I, if... if if Jackson was available at 20, I think that's the clear pick. I've seen some mock drafts also where you take Jordan Addison. I know it's not a glaring need at all for Seattle. And I know there's a bunch of free agents out there, veteran free agents that you could sign. But if they if they have a guy and he falls, Jordan Addison or Jackson, I, I say why not? I don't know how Seahawks fans feel about that. I would imagine that's a little bit more on the hotter side of takes go. The running back room as well, you know, the guard position, running backs, I don't worry about that at all because it's an extremely deep draft class. It's an extremely deep free agency as far as just being able to acquire like, you know, starting level players. You know, you see Damian Harris's name out there, Kareem Hunt's name out there. They're not going to take a running back in round one or I, I don't even think round two. Kenneth Walker's the truth, but as we saw last season, you got to keep him healthy. Like he's got to stay healthy and why not just get a nice complimentary bench guy to have. There's a lot of great one, two punch duos in this league. I'm thinking AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones is what comes to my mind first off, but defensively that's where it's going to be at. And I anticipate they have 13 defensive free agents. I think a lot of them will be back. You know, who needs to be back will be back. Guys like Cody Barton, I definitely think he's going to be back. He was the team's second best tackler behind Jordan Brooks last season with 136 combined tackles. But once again, if you go defense with picks number five and picks number 20, and you pair that up with a lot of your young rising talent last year from the draft, guys like Quandre Diggs in general, you have Ryan Neal, you have Kobe Bryant, you have Tariq Woolen. There's just a lot of young talent on the defense. So I think, you know, I know they were, what, 25th, 7th worst defense combined in the league last year. That is going to change completely. Now, once again, if they went quarterback at five, that would be a little bit of a curveball to me. But I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust the plan because they did a great job last season. Like, they really did a great job in the draft. So I know there's other holes that Seattle could focus on, and they probably will focus on. You know, we got two weeks left of free agents, or sorry, we have six weeks left of free agency before the draft begins. So, you know, stay tuned. Be sure to hit the like button, hit that sub button. If some Seahawks news breaks, I will definitely hop on a video and cover it for you guys. So stay tuned for that. But most importantly, I want to hear what Seahawks fans want to do with the fifth pick in the draft. I want to hear what you guys have to say about the 20th pick as well, but at least let me know what you're, who you're taking at five. How do you see it playing out? Appreciate you guys.